Hey everybody, today in this video we're going to take a look at installing Windows 11 on VirtualBox 7.0 which was released earlier this week and this is going to be done on a Windows 10 machine that doesn't meet the specifications to run Windows 11 because it does not have the TPM 2.0 module or the CPU requirements. So we'll see how this goes. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to say new VM. We're just going to call it Win11. As you can see, the dialog boxes for VirtualBox have changed a bit in this new version. Select the ISO image. We're going to do Windows 11 English. And we're going to do Windows 11 Pro. We're going to skip this unattended installation. Say next. Four gigs of RAM, two CPU cores, that's all good. Enable EFI, which is required there. And you can go ahead and click next on this one. That's just creating the hard drive and the size and the status screen. And we'll say finish. If we take a look at the settings, again, this would be Many of these settings would be the same as going into the BIOS or UEFI on a PC, especially here in system. We're going to turn off the floppy disk. And as you can see, it is defaulting to having EFI enabled and secure boot enabled, which did not exist on the 6.1 versions of VirtualBox. So we'll uh, go ahead and get this started. We'll look at display. Quickly. It maxes out video memory automatically at 128 megs. And we're going to go ahead and enable 3D acceleration. And that actually unlocks another 128 megs. So we could go up. Let's do 184 on that. And storage, it has everything on SATA. Audio, we don't need to look at. Network, we are going to change to bridged. We're going to go ahead and say OK to that. And go ahead and start the VM. OK, so this is the familiar Windows 11 install wizard. And we'll work through this fairly quick. And then we'll speed this up while the install copies and come back. All right, we're restarting into our new Windows 11 install. We're going to boot this without, hopefully it respects this, without the network cable connected. So we can do an offline setup and we'll connect that later. And the reason for doing this is that I still like to have a local account and with Windows 11, it forces you to use a Microsoft account uh, or Active Directory if you have that set up right from the get-go. All right, we're going to push through the rest of the installation and we'll see you again when it starts rebooting.
Okay, well, Houston, we have a problem. We will see if Windows 11 is smart enough to recover from this or not. And what do you know? It did actually recover. There we go. Let's hit display settings first right off the bat. Make this a little more reasonable to work with. Okay, so it's locked us at a 1024 by 768 resolution. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll put in guest editions and we'll see if we can remedy that. And we might just have to reboot to get the new drivers to activate, but we'll make this work. And it should be a whole lot more enjoyable to use this at a nicer screen resolution. <laughs> yep, reboot now. Which is great. So we're going to Make sure that's ejected. Okay, once again, we're at the splash screen. And now we should be able to do a few things. Okay, so let's try Setting screen resolution one more time. Should be a little happier now. Well, that's definitely better. Let's see. Still all that it gives us keep changes. Okay, we'll work with it. All right, so the first thing I like to do, actually, we need to connect to the internet first. And in order to do that, we're going to have to come up here to machine settings and make sure that our cable gets connected. And then well, we should automatically get a network connection going. Critical error occurred while running the virtual machine. An execution has been stopped. Well, this is not off to a great start, VirtualBox 7. That's the second time we've crashed. At least it kept our screen resolution. And it does have network activity showing down at the bottom. Okay. So, first thing I want to do is check out PowerShell and see if Winget is activated. And I may very well adjust this to the full 256 gigs of video memory just to make this run a little more smoothly. But in all reality, what we're going to be doing with Windows 11 on this channel and in this hopefully series of a few videos is not terribly graphically intensive. Uh, so... Uh, 
hopefully we can work around some of this sluggishness. But uh, at the same time, we do in fact have Windows running on a machine that it was never intended to run on. <laughs> so, um, power virtualization. Why the right-click menu will not come up. I am not entirely sure. You can see, come down here to about, uh, this is a Core i5-3470, so this is a third generation uh, i5. And it is in fact running Windows 11 Pro 21H2. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Get into the Windows terminal. Okay, one more reboot later. We actually have the Windows terminal open. And we'll see if WinGet is installed and ready to go. And it is not. All right, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And I will take this offline and I will get the updates installed for Windows, which is going to take a while. There's no reason to sit through that. And then we will see about doing some configuration work on this new VM starting from a clean slate with WinGet and we're going to uninstall some of the garbage that Microsoft preloads and see if we can make this a relatively usable VM uh, for the purposes of uh, a few videos. All right, so my first impressions of VirtualBox 7 on, on a Windows 10 machine, granted this is an older box, but I like some of the changes. I don't think it's quite ready for prime time. Um, hopefully Oracle is addressing some of the little quirks we've seen, especially with the Windows 11 install. And they will get a patch version out relatively quickly. These next few videos using VirtualBox 7 might be a little rockier than normal. If you're still using version 6.1 of VirtualBox and don't have a dire immediate need to run Windows 11 in a VM, I would say stay where you're at. It does need a little bit more spit polish before it's really ready to be used, as far as I'm concerned, based on the experience here, uh, specifically for Windows 11. Now, if you're gonna run a Linux VM, or a Windows 10 VM, you might be okay. I've not gone that deep into my testing yet. So again, there will, well, that was unexpected. All right, it crashed one more time. Uh, there will be additional videos coming and we will continue to put VirtualBox 7 through its paces and, uh, see what we can figure out and why it might be crashing on Windows 11. And I may have to break down to do a, a second Windows 11 install to see if this is a consistent issue or if it's just a glitch with this particular VM. So again, stay tuned. We'll have more information coming on that. Uh, but right now, based on this VM, I am not ready to recommend VirtualBox 7 to people. So on that note, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this video, uh, even if it's just laughing at um, Windows 11 crashing in VirtualBox. I, I had to curtail my laughter a little bit because, you know, if I didn't laugh, I'd want to beat my head up against the wall. So if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to like and subscribe and I'll see all of you fine people in the next video.
Have a great day.